ಸದಾಶಿವಸಮಾರಂಭಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಗಣೇಶ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲವಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಹಿಂಡೂಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಗಣೇಶ ಇಸ್ more like a household member of Hindu families than a god. Because he does not carry anything related to the seriousness of God. But he can create that sacredness in all of us. Embodiment of pranava, umkara sound, is the first god in the Hindu tradition. He is very shaped, shows he is a happy person, not bothered about nirahara samyama, not bothered about any other <laughs> things, living blissfully, happily eating whatever devotees give. Above all, beyond the red tape of Agamas. See, sometimes Agamas became a red tapeism, stopping us, making us feel distanced from the divine. This happened in me before going to Ramakrishna Mission. I had the Darshan of Sri Ramakrishna in my dream, in the visions. I used to feel so close with Sri Ramakrishna. I just know he is mine, I am his. But when I went to the Ramakrishna mission, when I took, the, took up the responsibility of Pujari, there is so much of rules and regulations, don't stand here, don't sit there, don't touch this, don't touch that. With so much of restrictions, I really felt I lost the closeness with Sri Ramakrishna. Sometimes the ahamas, which is created, which was supposed to help you to feel the deeper connection with a deity or guru or god, creates certain distance. But, When I settled with that system, then I saw the distance also disappeared and the system was also flowing properly and the feeling connection was growing, getting built. Anyhow, Ganesha is not bound by any of this agamic, red tapeism, bureaucracy. Ganesha temples are the only temples where there is no caste system. Anybody can be a priest. In Shiva temple, Ayangars cannot be priest. Even if you are a Brahmin, if you are from Ayangar family, you can't be a priest. In Vishnu temples, even if you are a Brahmin, if you are from Ayar, subsect, you can't be a priest. In the Shaiva Siddhanta temples, even if you are a Brahmin, if you are Ayangar or Ayar, you can't be a priest. You have to be only Desigar. Only that subsect can be a priest. But Ganesha does not have any restriction. Not only that. He is the largest worshipped God in the world. Because no other religion has so many gods. And there is no Hindu who will not worship Ganesha. Even if they are Vaishnavites, they start their rituals with Ganesha. They may not accept Shiva or Shaivism, but they accept Ganesha. In Hinduism, there are seven sampradayas. Worshippers of Ganesha, worshippers of Vishnu, worshippers of Shiva, worshippers of Devi, worshippers of Surya, worshippers of Subramanya, worshippers of their gurus. No 
one God is accepted by all seven sampradayas other than Ganesha. All seven sampradayas has to start their rituals with Ganesha worship. Sauras worshipping Surya, na, they don't need to accept Shiva or Vishnu. And in their worship, you will not find place for Shiva or Vishnu. Shaivites, you will not find any place for Vishnu in their worship system. In Vaishnavites, you will not find any place for Shiva in their worship system. The Vaishnavites are said to have a bell in their ears. If they see somebody chanting Shiva Shiva, they will ring the bell fast so that the mantra does not enter into their eyes. <laughs> Same way Vaish Shaivites, they are said to never cross any Vishnu cities or where the Vishnu temples exist because they should not get influenced streams. Anyhow, Shaktas, put Shiva at the feet of Devi. They don't worship any other deities. But whether you are a Shakta, Shaiva, Vaishnava, Saura, Gaumara, or Kartabaja. Kartabaja means the Guru worshippers. People who worship their own Guru as incarnation of God. Actually, Nityananda Sampradaya will fall under the Kartabajas only. You guys are guru worshippers. Basically, you believe your own guru is an incarnation of God. So you guys are the guru sampradayas, Kartabaja sampradayas, sampradayikas. Basically, Vedantis are guru worshippers. So, whatever sampradaya you may belong to, but you have to start your worship with the Ganesha, Ganesha Puja. Ganesha is the most beloved of the whole Hindu tradition and who does not create the red tapism of Agamas between disciples, devotees, followers and himself. Easy to approach, can be worshipped through any medium. You don't need to even have a big stone deity installed as per Agamas, just cow dung, a piece of cow dung, keep it and say Ganapata Ye Namaha is there. That's the beauty of Ganesha. His form is the ultimate. His name is the ultimate. His leelas, most beautiful, simple leelas. The very farm itself is so friendly. The elephant, which almost every human being likes. Even though it looks so huge, it can be domesticated so easily and can be your beautiful friend. He carries the elephant face which represents the Omkara. He represents a great philosophy, carries the Angusha. Angusha represents the power of unclutching. Pasa represents the ability to distance yourself from the emotions. And the broken tusk represents the sacrifice and spontaneity. And the modaka represents, if you have all these three qualities, your life will be sweet. Is the embodiment of intelligence and innocence together. Son of Shakti and life given by Mahadeva. Actually, even with Subramanya, there was no involvement of Devi. It was just from Shiva 
other than his spear, there is no Devi component in Subramanya. Devi gave that spear to him, but in Ganesha, Ganesha was made out of the body perfume of Devi and killed and life was given back by Mahadeva. So Ganesha carries both the elements of Shiva and Shakti he is the ultimate boon giver. He is pleased just by a coconut. From the time I remember myself, all my examinations are written by Ganesha only. <laughs> all you need to give him is a coconut. <laughs> and still he is a sweetheart of Hindu children, especially the exam going children. And a powerful divine being, my life, the spiritual life has started with Ganesha. Ganesha eating the food is the first experience happened in my life. And I can say that is the reason my spiritual journey was successful and it has unfolded with all its glory, beauty and the spiritual depth. So here I have today, for all of you to have darshan of Ganesha who ate the food and inaugurated my spiritual life and initiated <laughs> my spiritual life. We will be having today puja for Ganesha, for this deity also. Ganesha is the deity easy to worship, easy to relate with. You are supposed to start your spiritual life with him by his grace. And whether it is Vyasa, the first master, are the most recent master, Ramana Maharshi. All of them have to start with Ganesha, whether they are going to sing a stotra or give a teaching, anything or spiritual sutras. Even if they have to teach the enlightenment science which says there is no God with form, God is formlessness, they have to start with Ganesha. <laughs> Even if they are going to express the message, God is Nirguna Brahman, first they say, let me bow down to Ganesha to express these great truths properly. <laughs> Whether it is Vyasa or Ramana Varshi, first to last, everyone, most ancient to most recent, they have to start with Ganesha. Vyasa starts with Ganesh Purana and every book with the remembrance of Ganesha and Upanishads, Vedas starts with a beautiful Upanishad God, Ganapati Adarvasi is Upanishad. Get all the auspiciousness and blessings in your life from Ganesha. He is the Lord of all the ashramites in Kailash, he is the in charge of ashramites. Please understand. All ashramites in Kailash are called Ganas. There are four levels in Kailash. Salokya Mukta, Samibya Mukta, Sarubya Mukta, Sayujya Mukta. All Salokya Muktas and Samibya Muktas are called Ganas. All Sarubhya Muktas are called Muni and Rishis. All Sayujya Muktas does not have separate individual identity, they disappear into Mahadeva. So all Sayujya Muktas are called Mahadeva, Shiva. So 
the ganas all salokya and samipya muktas this two are called ganas ganesha is in charge of all of them that is why he is called ganesha lord of ganas he is responsible for all the ashramites in kailasa and he attends to all their needs he takes care of all of them including parvati all housekeeping needs are supplied by ganesha other than shiva of course muni san rishis they don't come under ganesha they come directly under dakshinamurti munishwara but all the ganas live under ganesha he is responsible for taking care of them in kailash each one takes up some responsibility munis and rishis even though they come directly under dakshinamurti nandi takes care of them that's why all munis and rishis are nandinatha sampradayas but all others come under ganesha ganesha is the deity easy to worship easy to relate with you are supposed to start your spiritual life with him by his grace jeevan mukti pradam deva paramahamsa nityananda a rare living incarnation is named among the world's 100 most spiritually influential personalities today paramahamsa nityananda has been placed alongside dalai lama nelson mandela Oprah Winfrey, Paulo Coelho and others by Mind Body Spirit, the world's top esoteric magazine from Watkins, London's oldest and largest bookstore. A yogi by birth, he has been expressing his power of enlightenment since birth. He has authored more than 500 books in Tamil and English. Translations of these books are available in 26 languages in Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, Gujarati, Oriya, Bengali, Marathi, French, Malay, Polish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Danish, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. He is also an exemplary speaker with over 10,000 hours of profound life solutions through his discourses, social services such as Annadan free medical care free educational services with ashrams schools temples hospitals established in more than 140 places around the world offering exceptional services a powerful spiritual healer who has healed millions of people of diseases from migraine to cancer a kriya yogi who has formulated kriyas for physical health and mental well-being benefiting thousands a living master who offers practical solutions for our everyday problems he is the founder and spiritual head of nityananda dhyana peetam a spiritual powerhouse who has revived the sacred vedic tradition by establishing vedic temples in places like los angeles san jose seattle toronto ohio oklahoma phoenix st louis malaysia brazil paris guadeloupe dallas new york new jersey atlanta calgary vancouver singapore and places in india like bengaluru hyderabad tiruvannamalai a spiritual guru for 10 million followers an incarnation who transmits the highest spiritual energy through initiation a contemporary yogi who has revived the vedic science of yoga worldwide through thousands of yoga centers an adept in ashtamaha siddhis mystical yogic powers who has effortlessly awakened the kundalini of thousands and graced them with spiritual powers a dynamic young guru who is an inspiration for for thousands of youngsters india's most watched spiritual guru online a beacon of spiritual light 
who has triumphed over the forces of religious terrorism and political persecution. Paramahamsa Nityananda is an eternal Kalpataru, blessing the world with the boons of material abundance and spiritual enlightenment. He is the 293rd pontiff of the world's most ancient Hindu organization, Madurai Adinam. Shantamayam Bandham